Good morning to you all. Uh, my name is uh, Jennifer Furren and I am a TB doctor. Uh, and it is my great pleasure to make this short video to really encourage you in the important work that you're all doing in Mombasa. Uh, Alan Maleche, who has become a dear friend and is someone I respect very much, um, asked me if I um, would make a video um, to really share with you the global perspective uh, on where things are moving with tuberculosis. And I readily agreed to do this, uh, mostly because I really respect and enjoy Alan and I do anything he asks, but also because I really wanna thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for the work that you're doing today. I am a physician who's been working in the field of TB and HIV for the last 23 years. And I can tell you that TB is one of the most devastating diseases I've ever seen. Um, we know right now that tuberculosis is the leading infectious killer of adults worldwide. Approximately 10 million people a year get tuberculosis, and almost 2 million of them die of their disease, often untreated, undiagnosed, or undergoing a great deal of suffering. It's time for this to stop, uh, and I hope that many of you have heard about um, some big potential political changes that are coming, uh, most notably a high-level meeting uh, at the United Nations this September. Because the meeting is of such significance, we've seen a great deal of political talk and promises made around uh, what we need to do to eliminate tuberculosis. However, we're having a hard time seeing how some of these promises are going to translate into action. Chief among the promises that people are discussing is this idea of a human rights or patient-centered, people-centered approach to tuberculosis care. Uh, and I can tell you that if anything, the current approach to tuberculosis is just the opposite. Uh, it's punitive, it's discriminatory, and it centers on the health system uh, instead of being centered on how to best provide services to people who are affected by, infected with, and sick from tuberculosis. And that's why the work that you all have gathered to do um, in Mombasa is incredibly important. You're not only thinking about um, the human rights approach to tuberculosis and HIV, but you're actually creating it uh, with the work plans uh, that you're all committed to doing there. And it's incredibly exciting, it's incredibly innovative, and I'm sure at times it feels a little bit scary too, uh, because tuberculosis has never been a problem. There's no clear path to take moving forward, and sometimes it can feel like uh, you're operating a little bit in the dark. Uh, but I can tell you, for those of us who work on the medical side, what you're doing here will shine as a bright light uh, for all of us to follow. I'm a TB doctor, pure and simple, and I can tell you that most of the people that I work with have suffered greatly from tuberculosis. I'm thinking back to a patient of mine um, who was diagnosed with a drug-resistant form of tuberculosis and who was living in a country in Southern Africa uh, and whose life was really um, not just uh, difficult because of tuberculosis, but because of the job that he had to do, the fact that he lived in extreme poverty, uh, and the fact that there were very little um, accountings of how his human rights and the legal environment could help protect him. Uh, he was working in a larger country in a mine, um, and he was in that country um, without legal papers to do so. This was pretty typical of many in his situation uh, in the country of his home, uh, where there was very little work. And so he had been recruited uh, to work in the mine uh, and did the very dangerous job of laying a blast in caps. And in fact, in one of um, his jobs, he actually lost part of his hand. Uh, to the blasting. And since he was not a documented worker, he did not seek health care for this. Uh, and he became uh, somewhat disabled um, and really uh, not able to perform functions uh, at work well or outside of work well either. He didn't seek medical care or do anything about this because he was afraid uh, that he had no legal standing. Um, he did continue to work in the mine as much as he possibly could. However, he developed cough, fever, a shortness of breath, uh, and began to lose weight. Uh, the mining company noticed this, um, and a doctor there suggested that he get tested for TB and HIV. And unfortunately, his test turned out positive for both diseases. 
Um, he was told he needed to go back to his home country to start taking treatment, uh, and he was put on a bus uh, and sent back across the border uh, to his home country um, where he was offered TB treatment, uh, and he took it religiously but still didn't get better. His family was starving and he needed to continue to try to make money, so he crossed the border again to find work in the mining industry, uh, and he was taken into custody for illegally entering the country. He was still coughing, still had shortness of breath and weight loss, and a test done uh, in the prison showed that he not only had tuberculosis, but he had drug-resistant tuberculosis. Uh, he was once again sent back to his home country where there was no treatment available for drug-resistant tuberculosis, uh, and he died at his home there. This is a terrible, tragic tale of woe, um, but it is typical of many people who are sick with TB and drug-resistant TB all over the world. There are immigration issues at play here. There are socioeconomic issues at play here. There are healthcare issues at play here. Uh, and these are things that we can't just look at from a medical standpoint, but that we have to look at from a human rights and a legal standpoint as well. I know all of you come from many different professions. There are lawyers, judges, correctional officers, uh, and, and a wide array of people there. But I know all of you will encounter and have encountered TB and HIV in your work. I think it's important as we move forward together and try to achieve our goal of a TB-free world that doctors and folks like yourselves stay in great communication with one another. The problem of tuberculosis is one that's too big for any one cadre of individuals to solve. And as we commit ourselves to doing better work to serve all people affected by this disease, I think we're really making a commitment to one another as well. Uh, I know that I look forward uh, to seeing what you continue to bring to the table and that as a doctor, I really need uh, and all of us really need your guidance, your input and your perspectives on how we can rid the world of the scourge of tuberculosis. I wish I could be with you in Mombasa, but I hope you know that my heart and thoughts are there. And Alan can tell you how to contact me if you have any questions or medical thoughts or anytime you want to further discuss TB at all. But I can tell you that what you're doing today, although it may feel small, is gigantic. Uh, and that you're changing the world uh, with the activities that you undertake. How are you changing it? You are stepping forward to take on the biggest infectious killer of adults worldwide. And it is through your work that we'll be able to do so in a more effective manner that takes into account the whole complex system, including the legal aspects and the human rights of people living with the disease everywhere. Thank you and good luck.